Hello friends, this video on sexual reproduction in flowering plants part 11 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now let us talk about the pollinating agents because they play the most important role. They are the ones which actually carry the uh, male gametes from anther to stigma. So what are pollinating agents? So these are those agents which carry pollen grains from anther to stigma of same or different plant. So whether it is uh, gytnogamy or it is xenogamy, so whether whatever type of pollination it may be, it will leave the agents who will actually carry the pollen grains from anther to stigma. So those agents can be living organisms or they can be non-living things as well. So they are called pollinating agents. Now, they are again classified into two categories. One is the biotic agents. Now, bio is means something related to life. So, biotic agents are the living agents, the agents which are living organisms. So, bio means anything that has life. So, living organisms which act as agents of pollination, for example, insects, birds, even some animals act as biotic agents. The next one is abiotic agents that is the non-living objects which act as agents of pollination. For example, wind, water. Now one major difference between the biotic agents and the abiotic agents is that pollination with abiotic agents occurs just by chance. For example, when wind blows, so it is a matter of chance that some of the pollen grains might be carried over from one plant to another. But now whether actual pollination will happen or not that is not sure sometimes the wind might not be very strong so pollination might not occur so the abiotic agents they are always uh, there is always a matter of chance i mean it is not necessary that it has to happen so these are the two categories so let us first talk about the abiotic agents and in abiotic agents we will talk about two agents that is wind and water now out of these two wind pollination is more common when compared to water pollination. So what happens here is pollen grains are carried by wind from anther to stigma of the same plant or different plant. Now why it is there is a matter of chance because uh, now the pollen grains get carried away by the wind that is fine but whether they carried uh, they get carried to the right stigma or not that is always a matter of chance. Now, characteristics of a plant which gets pollinated by wind. Now, every plant, depending upon the pollinating agent, they also adapt themselves. So, for example, mostly the insect pollinated plants, they rely on insects for pollination to happen. So, what do they do? They want to attract insects. That is why mostly the insect pollinated plants are very bright in color. They also have a specific fragrance so that they can attract insects. So likewise, the plants also get adapted depending upon their pollinating agents. So the plants which get pollinated by wind, they have some of these characteristics. Like their pollen grains are very light because if the pollen grains are very heavy, they will not be carried away by the wind. So they are extremely light in weight. They are non-sticky because if they are sticky, again, if, if, if let us suppose something is very sticky, Okay, suppose if you have a piece of paper lying on the table, now if wind blows, a strong wind blows, what will happen? That the light piece of paper might get carried away by the wind. But now you imagine a situation where you have used a little bit of gum or something, or a glue, and then you have stick, stuck it to an object on the table, or you have stuck it to the table itself. Now even if a strong wind blows, the paper doesn't get carried away with the wind. That's because it is tightly bound to the table now. So similarly, the pollen grains need to be non-sticky so that they are easily carried away by the wind. They should have well exposed stamens because if the stamens are not properly exposed, then the pollen grains will not get carried away because if they are closed or hidden somewhere, for example, if the table on which that piece of paper is lying, let us suppose if it is there inside a closed room, so even if a wind blows, that doesn't matter because it is well protected inside that room. So it will not be carried away. But if 
the same table with the same piece of paper is just lying in the garden in open then as soon as the wind blows the paper gets carried away so the stamens need to be well exposed large feathery stigma now the wind will actually carry them to the stigma now the wind doesn't know the purpose wind is blowing in its own way it is just that by chance these pollen grains are also getting carried away now if the stigma which are there if they are very large and very feathery then they can catch those pollen grains and that is how pollination can take place because if the pollen grains do not reach stigma if they fall here and there then pollination doesn't happen then this is of no use so the stigma also need to be quite large quite feathery so that they can also catch the pollen grains from the wind so these are some of the characteristics of wind pollination it has also been observed that for wind pollination to take place many flowers are packed in compact form in the inflorescence it is very common in plants like grasses and uh, this is as i mentioned before also this is the most common abiotic uh, pollinating agent now the next agent is water and let's see how pollination happens by water well this is a less common mode of pollination when compared to wind uh, water pollination again can occur in a variety of ways depending upon the plant in which it occurs so in different plants it happens in different ways for example in lower plants like algae or bryophytes like mosses and ferns how will this water pollination take place so let us have a quick look so in those plants it water acts as a medium for gamete transfer so what happens is the male uh, gamete is released into the water the female gamete is also released into the water and the fusion takes place in the water itself so that is how water acts as a medium for gamete transfer in lower plants when i say lower plants i am talking about mosses ferns algae etc whereas in some other plants the female flowers reach the surface of water by a stalk where the male gametes are already released so in some plants the male gametes are released on the surface of water so if this is the water surface here the male gametes are released but the female flowers are deep inside the water so what will they do they will reach the surface of the water with the help of a stalk so when they reach the surface of the water they will be able to meet the male gametes and that is where fusion will take place so this is one way of pollination with the help of the stalk so one such example is the aquatic plant called vallisneria where the pollen grains or where the female gametes reach the surface by a stalk and then the gametes are carried on the surface of water by water currents another way is that male gametes are released inside water where flowers remain now instead of the male gametes being released on the water surface they are released deep inside the water and the female flowers are present deep inside the water so that means they both can meet and fusion can take place so pollination is all about making the male and the female gamete meet each other so since both the male and the female gametes are non motile so we need some medium or agent to make them move from one place to another so as i said in water pollination occurs by a number of ways now another important adaptation which the plants have to do if they are water pollinated plants is that the pollen grains need to be prevented from getting wet because every time it is the medium is water so so, so every time the pollen grain is moving through water so it might get wet but we do not want the pollen grains to be wet so how do we protect them from being wet there is a covering which is a mucilaginous covering and that is how it is like a waterproof covering it doesn't allow the pollen grain to become wet so this is one adaptation by the water pollinated plants now this it is not necessary that all aquatic plants get water pollinated because there are certain plants where uh, the flowers are actually present outside the surface of water maybe the plant the roots and the stem is present inside water but the flower is present outside the surface of water so in case of those plants they are not water pollinated they can be pollinated by insects but it is just that inside the water so they have they follow all these mechanisms for pollination let us now look at the biotic agents 
Now, when you talk about biotic agents, it involves all sorts of insects, birds, as well as small animals like rodents also. So they all act as biotic agents of pollination. So these are the most common biotic pollinating agents. So amongst all the living organisms, these are the most common agents of pollination. Now there are two categories of plants. One is animal pollinated plants. For example, plants pollinated by animals like lizards or rats and the insect pollinated plants. So we are going to discuss about both of these together because both the concept of both of these are almost the same. It is shows that some plants are animal pollinated while some others are insect pollinated. Another important thing to be noted here is that not every animal or every insect can pollinate any can pollinate any plant. So plants are specially adapted depending upon their pollinators. So there are a set of plants which can be pollinated only by rodents. Similarly, there can be a set of plants which can be pollinated only by insects. So it is not that any animal or any insect can pollinate any other plant. Thank you. Please visit www.examphio.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, Find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.